don't care what type of trader you are, okay? I, you don't need to trade pivots. You could be a futures trader, you could trade uh, Pokemon cards, right? Whatever, whatever trader you are, okay? Put yourself in a position that you know come Monday morning and the bell rings, no matter what the market throws in you, hell high water, whatever, bull, bear, and different elephant, poodle, Yorkie, whatever, okay? Put yourself in a position that you sustain longevity. Welcome to Access a Trader, the number one community for those who are committed to taking control of their trading in order to achieve success, profitability, and longevity. Thank you for joining us. Here's Dan Shapiro to help you find your edge, master your process, and own your future. Hey guys, good morning everybody. Welcome uh, to another uh, weekend edition of uh, the Access of Trader .com, uh update show. Hope everybody is having a blessed weekend. Um, again, it, it, it's amazing. Um, I haven't had a real haircut in about nine months. Okay, my, my wife has been doing these jailhouse haircuts on me. <laughs> um, I shave now like once every week and a half. All right. Um, all we basically do, and again, I, for, for those you know, for those quick to judge, I haven't had a I haven't had a vacation now in about what ten months. So I'm wound up. Okay. And before anybody judges, say what's the problem? Live your life. Again, I had two two friends, childhood friends, die of COVID, and one uh, was in the hospital for several weeks. So again, I don't want to put my kids out there for just in case having a little bit of pleasure, uh, the kind of you know have the, the worst case scenario happen. So I'm wound up pretty tight. And, um, you know, for, came Thursday, came last Thursday, I was incredibly, incredibly tired. I mean, to the point of when I was recording the video, I actually led with me saying I was this close not recording the video. That's how tired I was. So for all of us who've been uh, very, very responsible, um, and again, not putting any chances. Again, we know the numbers, okay? We just don't want to be part of that 0. .00000, right? That just leave Earth uh, before uh, our time. So a lot of us who've been trading for a very, very long time, um, you know, it's hard to balance between the mental aspect and continuously pushing, right? Pushing the boundaries of what, again, arguably now just as good if maybe it's not, you know, a notch lower uh, than what we saw in the dot-com era. So we want to continue to put ourselves in a position to be present when these opportunities are there. Because again, we all know eventually this is going to stop. And I say this randomly because this is true. I mean, any great bull market run, uh, especially euphoric levels, eventually is going to end. Like, like again, I say this every single day. It might end tomorrow. It might end five years from now, but it will end. So we want to kind of put ourselves in the position that we are present to really push as much as possible. But at the same time, if we're not mentally, you know, if we're not mentally 100%, it's very, very tough to concentrate. It's very, very tough uh, to clearly think. And it's also impossible um, to kind of make good solid choices. So I think right now kind of, you know, we're going, we're, we're heading into the last, uh, you know, the last three, four months of 2020 and good riddance again, 2020, uh, just amazing, just more and more, just bad news, crazy events, um, just continue to rise, you know, all, all over the world. Um, so good riddance, right? And I, I understand it's only a day on the calendar or a date on the calendar. Again, what's the difference between uh, January 1st, 2021 or December 31st, 2020, right? 2020 is out of here. So I think we have to find a balance, all of us. And I've been speaking to a lot of guys uh, who've been on crazy runs and they're like, Dan, I'm holding on mentally, okay? Because everybody's a lot, pretty much in the same position. We're holding on to the point that, again, it's so important to find the balance between trading aggressively when it's warranted. Obviously, there's going to be days that markets are going to uh, contract channels, and those are the days you kind of leave, want to leave alone. Um, so it, there's a balance between wanting to be uh, an aggressive trader in a very, very hot market and being a better friend to yourself. And there is a formula to this, and, and, I've, been, and I've been telling this to guys now. Uh, for months, uh, you know, 90, you know, 95% of the aggression for the day 
is going to be until that, you know, figure between lunchtime and about one o'clock. So you figure between the open uh, till about one o'clock. After that, you're going to see a natural um, range contraction. And I say this every single day. And most traders don't know that, okay? Most traders just don't have the experience. And that's why, unfortunately, most new traders continue to give back good chunks of their day in the afternoon because they just don't understand that the market is broken down into two uh, rational, uh, rational um, uh, sequences. You got the morning uh, that traders are taking advantage, are uh, taking advantage of emotional chasers. There's a lot of excitement. There's a lot of testosterone. There's a lot of everything, right? And there's a, uh, the prices are exaggerated. That's the channels you want to trade. By the time the afternoon comes, uh, traders who are looking to hold positions overnight, all they're doing, or even longer term, all they're doing is positioning. And that's why a lot of these channels start to contract. But unfortunately, a lot of new traders, they don't get that. And a lot of times you hear that scenario, I gave back my whole day, right? That happens in the afternoon. That doesn't happen in the morning. So for all you guys who have been on good runs, I would really suggest just stop trading the afternoon, okay? Take, you know, take half the day off. You're still taking advantage of one of the more aggressive markets uh, I've traded in the last nearly 21 years now, uh, and you're being a better friend to yourself. I say this all the time, do something nice for yourself, okay? This is mentally, this is all we have. If, if you're not mentally there, don't even turn on the computer. I don't care you know, if, if Amazon's gonna give you a, a 75 point uh, potential candle. The point is if you're not mentally sharp, okay, and you are uh, you know, weighed down heavily mentally, just by life, just by circumstances, you're never going to take advantage. And more important, you're going to do something unfortunately stupid to, um, you know, to really, uh, you know, put a hickey on your account. So you don't want to do that. So be a better friend to yourself. Uh, again, you know, log off at lunchtime, you know, go to the park, go to the beach, go to the lake, go ride a bike, uh, you know, do something nice to yourself. And again, you could still take advantage of a very, very hot market the next day. The intervals are still going to be there. Believe me, uh, if you're looking at a trade in the afternoon, that trade is going to be worth 50 to 50 cents to a dollar. That same setup in the morning could be worth $12, right? In this type of exaggerated market. So trust me, be a better friend to yourself. Um, take half the day off. Um, you're always, you're always going to be, you're always going to be in a position of strength as long as you're being a better friend to yourself. So take my advice, believe me, the market's not going anywhere, especially in the afternoons. And most traders are, you know, ripping their hairs out, poking out their eyeballs. Why did I give back my whole day? And again, this is the reason why the intervals are in the morning, take advantage of them. Um, so really hot market. I mean, there's, there's really nothing you can say about it. Um, even the days that you were preparing uh, for a contraction day or possible slower day, you look up and you get massive value. And if you look at uh, Thursday's video, I said, hey, look, you know, there's been some massive moves here. I wouldn't be shocked if we have a slower day on Friday. And you're preparing for it, right? You're mentally preparing for it because, again, the last thing you want to do is trade irresponsibly, keep on pushing, pushing, pushing. But then you wake up on Friday and you got these channels and they confirm you get these, all these aggressive option buyers coming in, and the next thing you know, the market continues its insanity. And if you look at the week, you got three, you got nearly 3% uh, rises everywhere. Uh, S&P did incredibly well. NASDAQ did incredibly well. The Dow finally erased, and if you think about it, it doesn't even make sense, but the Dow finally erased all its gains, excuse me, all its losses from the March lows. Think about how long it took while the NASDAQ has been completely thriving. So huge disconnect there. It shows you really how strong these beta slash tech stocks uh, have been have been there. So it's, it, it really is incredible. Uh, but what's more amazing is how much aggression there actually is. And again, if you go back and look at Main Street America versus you know, Wall Street America, it's like having two different conversations and the market continues to be good. The problem now is kind of going forward every single day. Number one, we know deep in our minds, right? Again, for all of us have been trading for a long time, we know what happens next, right? We know eventually what happens. And again, like I said, it could happen tomorrow. It could happen three years from now. We're now fortune tellers. Again, I couldn't tell you what Amazon's going to do this week. I can't tell you what Tesla and Apple after their split going to do this week. We don't know. Okay. We don't know. Okay. Stop guessing. We don't know. Nobody's smart enough. Okay. Um, so it's not our job to guess. Again, it's price action. Whatever Tesla, Tesla tells you is going to do this week, that it's going to do. It's going to split. There's euphoria, a lot of mis, uh, uh, mis-uneducated traders talking about why are people selling on Friday? Uh, don't you want your $4 dividend? 
my mind almost exploded, right? You're getting a lot of uneducated traders talking about some nonsense. And again, that's what this business is. It's uneducated traders versus educated traders. You pretty much understand who wins. Again, euphoric moves uh, are completely different than strategic alignments through technical analysis. So it would be, be very, very uh, un, un, coherent to understand what is what. Uh, but I, I think this market is really teaching us a couple of things. Uh, the opportunity is there, okay? Whether it's on a daily basis in this type of tape, yes. Um, you know, on a weekly basis, yes. But again, eventually, okay, eventually the market will stop. It's so important right now from the point of your educational bias, your, your kind of foundation that you are laying down to yourself. What happens, okay, and you have to ask your, your question to yourself every single day, what happens when this stops? Because remember, during the internet craze, I didn't think this is ever gonna stop, okay? I thought this was like the easiest thing ever. And again, when you're simple-minded and you're completely naive and you're wet behind the ears, you're thinking it's easy, right? So when you're long one share of Tesla, at, you know, at 1500 it goes to 2300 right? You think it's easy, right? I'm not digging here. I'm just telling you what's happening here. Um, so eventually, you have to ask yourself the responsible question. Eventually, the musical chairs will stop. Eventually, the aggression will stop. What are you doing to put yourself in a position that the next sequence of your trading career, your trading journey will begin, okay? Eventually, the average true range of Tesla, and might start uh, on Monday, um, will not be 150 points a day. Maybe it's four points a day, okay? Eventually, you know, the sequence and the average true range after Apple's split, okay, might not be $6 for the day. It might be $2 for the day, right? And on and on and on. And maybe, I know crazy is as crazy as it sounds, maybe the market one day will flatline and start going lower, right? Crazy it sounds. So what are you doing to put yourself in a position to play the long game, the longevity, right? What necessarily steps are you going to take? And the most amazing part is when you're a gambler, right? And you are constantly pushing the chips on the table and you're on a hot streak. Again, like a Tesla, for example, any high beta name has been exploding. You never think that streak is going to end. Unfortunately, again, remember, and this is very, very important. There's a reason why the casino always wins, okay? It's going to stop. Your job, again, is to predict levels of stoppage, react before it stops, and put yourself in a position of safety, and put yourself in a position that you can make money on both sides of the market. A lot of people turn around because they're so naive and say, the sellers never win, the bears never win. Remember, if you're a professional trader, both sides win. Both sides win constantly, okay? Even the guys who are perma bears in this market, they're perma bears in the market professionally. They're not just selling stocks to sell stocks, they have an edge. So the naive aspect of bears never learn, bears never win, I, I don't believe in bulls and bears, okay? I believe in opportunity. I believe in seller's bias and I believe in buyer's bias. Right now, we're an incredibly buyer's bias. We've been like this for a very, very long time. Obviously, we have opportunities of strength and weakness on both sides of the market, but we know generally who's winning, okay? Uh, but again, when this market turns, and it will, okay, again, a year from now, tomorrow, three years from now, again, put yourself in a position, no matter what your trading style is, no matter what type of stocks you trade, put yourself in a position that you are ready. And not only are you ready, you're looking to continue to thrive. Again, that is the difference between somebody who buys stocks and a professional trader. And again, if you're not putting in the work, and I say this every single weekend, and again, I don't care what type of trader you are, okay? I, you don't need to trade pivots. You could be a futures trader, you could trade uh, Pokemon cards, right? Whatever, whatever trader you are, okay? Put yourself in a position that you know come Monday morning and the bell rings, no matter what the market throws in you, hell high water, whatever, bull, bear, and different elephant, poodle, Yorkie, whatever, okay? Put yourself in a position that you sustain longevity. Um, so crazy week, really, really aggressive week. Um, names have been going absolutely nuts. The Roku's of the world, and we'll talk about the pivots in a second, Nvidia's of the world, Tesla, uh, Apple, and again, I, I'm actually looking forward uh, to seeing what happens after Tesla and Apple splits. Uh, obviously, uh, the run-ups have been significant, um, so I'm very, very curious to have two things that I want to watch this week. I didn't trade Tesla at all the last week. Didn't need to, okay? The, the violence and the aggressive nature on the videos of Facebooks, um, Roku, Zoom, 
Uh, even Beyond. Beyond was an awesome mover on, was it Thursday, Wednesday, one of those days. Um, there's been so much value, okay? So I, I, I kind of just stopped trading Tesla for a week because again, who the hell wants to trade a stock, especially on the equity side? You got a $4 spread, no liquidity, ridiculous moves. You got to trade like an, especially I trade equity. You got to trade like an eighth size. You got to you got to give it ridiculous amounts of room just to see if you if you are structurally correct. Um, so I, I, I kind of moved past it, but I, I'm very very eager to see a couple of things. Um, I want to see um, what the new average true range in Apple, especially Tesla, are. Um, I want to see how much liquidity jumps back. And again, maybe the first three four days won't be a good indication of what to expect. Because remember, before Apple split the first time seven to one, it was the best trader, it really was. It was like Tesla. And when it split, it really took two years uh, for Apple to kind of establish its kind of personality that you see now. So it was a really crappy trader for about two years after the split. So we want to want to, you know, we definitely want to pay attention to how Tesla and Apple, uh, number one liquidity. Obviously, Apple's gonna have tons of liquidity, especially at a lower price. But I wanna pay attention to uh, spread. I wanna pay attention to average true range. Um, and I wanna see what happens from channel to channel. So I, I'll, I'll probably take tomorrow in, in kind of watching, maybe even Tuesday. Maybe I'll start trading Tesla and Apple again by Wednesday, just because I wanna see some of the personality die out. And again, guys, for all you new traders, again, get your education done. You're not getting a $4 dividend and stocks don't always go up after the split. Okay. Let, let's come on, man. You guys are adults. Read something. The, infra, the in, internet's there to give you as much information as possible. This is the, this is the, the truly gift that every new trader gets. Educate yourself. What I read on Friday, I mean, and again, I understand a lot of you guys are new, but just because you're new, get proper education, man. Get proper understanding of what you're talking about. It's like, it's like, you know, it's like a, a baseball player coming up to, to the plate with a tennis racket. Okay. If you're going to play the game, okay. Play it the right way, play with the right equipment, play with the right information. You know, again, there's a difference between, again, what a professional trader is and a person who buys and sells stocks. Just remember that. Just get your ducks uh, in a row. So uh, going into this week, uh, I am bullish, of course. I mean, look at look at look at the cues. You got a three percent run. Uh, earnings continue to be good. Even you know, even retailers who who believe that we talked about last week with the targets and the WalMarts. And you look at Dick's, for example, Dick's Sporting Goods, uh, two hundred percent rise, man. It was a two hundred percent rise. Of, I think in revenues or earnings, well, something like that. Uh, but the, but the point is, people are still spending money, and, and this is still giving validation. Um, to the economy, right? To, you know, we got a presidential race uh, starting and we'll start to, uh, you know, get really, really aggressive campaigning and this, that, the other thing. Uh, and by the way, that must see TV between, I'm, I'm not a big uh, politics guy, but I can't imagine the entertainment level, uh, Trump versus Biden debate. This will be better than anything that Netflix has, uh, 100%. So I'm actually, I'm actually looking forward to the entertainment level uh, of what will apparently go on there. Uh, but the market continues to be hot. Again, until we lose this whole range here uh, on the queues, you got to you know, give these stocks the benefit of the doubt. If you guys have been seeing all week, uh, the dip 60-minute plays on weaker opens have been working incredibly well, especially uh, with very, very strong beta names. Everything just keeps on getting bought. Uh, on dips. The, the one thing we have to watch at the queues for this week, especially any close uh, below this 288 level or 289 level on the queues is going to at least raise some eyebrows. So we want to definitely pay attention to that. Uh, if you look at the IWM, again, the IWM is a lagger, but, but again, this is the good news uh, for all you guys who trade not necessarily small caps with smaller price names or lower price names. You can see how close the IWM is really coming out, trying to come out of this channel. If it does, maybe it tests all time highs as well. Uh, the group that's continuously just, just being sold is the, is the biotechs, right? Just continuously the biotechs. And again, you'll have your headline here and there, Moderna, AstraZeneca, this one, that one. But as far as you see the group, you would never know uh, that how strong the overall indexes have been. Again, something you have to watch. And again, if there is obviously much more aggressive money flows outflows right out of the market this is going to be the group okay because again like i say every single week ninety thousand 
biotech companies have come out with a COVID PR. Nobody cares anymore. We just want some sort of um, some sort of final result. And whoever gets that final result, whether it's an AstraZeneca, Pfizer, a Gilead, who knows, Johnson, who the hell knows, right? That's all we want. We don't want to hear, you know, we don't want to hear about the cries of the baby. We just want to see the baby. And that's kind of why the biotechs are definitely lagging. Uh, if you look at the Dow again, uh, finally made back their losses from, um, from March, right? Isn't that amazing? They finally made back their losses from March. Uh, now uh, at all time highs, Qs are obviously uh, going absolutely nuts. So again, you have to find uh, you have to find um, the balance between stock market being very, very strong and finding value. And, and that's the hard part, right? That really is the hard part now because you have so many names and at so many big runs, you have to look for names that are lagging or have, looking for names uh, that are coming out of bottom channels. And again, if you saw what happened in the last few weeks, you saw that some of the retail names popping up, uh, even, even the cruise ships, right? Even the cruise ships trying to find the bottom coming out, the airlines trying to find a bottom, uh, co you know, coming out. And now you're starting to see names like the restaurant space, like, uh, like PLAY, Damon Busters, right? Beautiful chart. Again, so you wouldn't like, I, these things wouldn't even make my radar in a normal market. But again, beggars can't be choosers. And you see uh, you know, when you see channels like this, and this is very, very obvious here, you can see a channel uh, that gave you a two, three day run. We're kind of seeing a mirror image on uh, Damon Buster's. Uh, if you look at Chef, right, a lot of names in the restaurant space, catering space, they all kind of look the same. So there's definitely value here. It's very, very tough to find value in techno, uh, in, in tech space right now. Most names are incredibly aggressive. Um, you have to really, you know, look for names that are coming out of channels or, or rested or have been resting. Uh, like a Domo, for example, big buyer uh, came in on Friday, like a monster, uh, like a monster, you know, looking very, very good. Uh, even names, uh, even names like Chewy that broke out on Friday, right? Even names like Chewy. I mean, this is at least you're getting some sort of aggression from at least normalized levels. You know, when you look at a Tesla, you know, that had a run, you know, just from, you know, just from where, from the start of August from 1300, not a lot of value there, right? At least not on the upside. Um, so you have to do your due diligence. You have to put in extra work uh, on the weekends to find those uh, maybe unorthodox plays that you wouldn't generally look at, but that's where your value is going to be. And again, remember when they pull the market, again, wh whether it's tomorrow or three years from now, the ones that have had the biggest runs, the ones that are up way into the stratosphere that are way above their, you know, 200 day moving averages. Those are the ones that always get pulled first. So if you look at uh, any random pulls uh, in the middle of the week, even if, the, if, even if these pulls are only an hour, the stocks that get to hit the most are the Teslas, the Amazons and the videos of the world, the apples are the most, because again, uh, when you go through the stratosphere, again, remember, um, you know, it will come down. Okay. It's just, it's just the reality. Gravity, uh, is real. So be very, very careful, especially I get a lot of new traders and say, is it too late to buy Apple? Is it too late? Look where these stocks came from. Is it too late to buy Tesla? It's not too late to buy Tesla if you're doing it for a trade. If you're looking for, you know, if you, if you think the stock is going to three, four thousand dollars next week, well, no, maybe, maybe not next week, but you kind of get the point. Look, look how far they are above the 200 day moving at the 200 day on, on, on Tesla is $800. Okay. And again, price reflected after the split, but you know, the split, but but again, just again, if you swing stocks, swing them from the bottom, swing them from uh, the middle tiers, do not swing them from uh, orbit, or else uh, you can have a very very aggressive and unfortunately harsh reality. Uh, so going into this week, uh, I'm definitely bullish. I'm always uh, again uh, watching some of these names for uh, potential. Um, uh, pullbacks just because again, I, I already went through it. Okay. I went through this uh, stage 20 years ago, so I know exactly what's going to happen. So I want to be very, very prepared. Uh, if you look at Friday session again, incredibly aggressive. Okay. Um, I, I, I think it really does mirror the, you know, where we are right now in this tape. Um, I, I think this is truly one of the more, uh, aggressive markets. Um, that I've probably ever seen. I, I think that's the best way of saying it. Um, I, I think that the traders who have been really complaining about, um, you know, really complaining about uh, what the market is doing, what the Fed is doing, uh, all these, you know, all these different things. Um, I think they're doing a tremendous disservice because again, 
complaining about something uh, really doesn't pay the bills. Okay, um, you're, you know, I, it's it's all understandable that everybody has an opinion and everybody has a take of the market, what they think is going to be. But if you're still in that, you know, if you're still in that situation that you are um, trying to will the market into doing. Uh, what you think the market's going to do, you're, you're going to miss the boat and you have been missing the boat. So again, you can complain as much as you want, uh, but the reality uh, is the reality. So let's talk about Friday's session. Um, again, I, I came into it and I said, look, I'm in scalp mode, right? I'm in scalp mode. Uh, I think most of the names are tired in the middle of the ranges. Uh, there's always a chance a beta wakes up. And that, I think that's the key. Uh, that's the key scenario. Right? There's always a chance beta wakes up. And we're going to be ready for it. Second entries on everything. Take on the way up. Break even on the balance. Have a great day. So uh, again, slowly but surely. And again, you know, Apple in the morning just gave you a perfect, a perfect example of how stocks are tired, right? The stocks that are in orbit, they're very tired. Again, then stocks that just recently broke out or resting, those are the ones that are putting up the aggression. So sneaky channel 504. Uh, rejected three times in the 60. If it builds, can spike. So uh, here was Apple. Here's a 60-minute channel. Uh, here's a 60-minute channel right here. So here's the 504. Here, let me show you. Here's a 504 right here. 504, 504. And it went to almost 506. And again, before reverse course, that's why I keep on saying, keep taking on the way up. These things are so overbought. It's incredible. Uh, beyond uh, 134, 60-minute channel needs to build for a spike. Uh, BYND, so here's the 134, right? Here's the 134, 134. Uh, only put up a 60 cent move again, you know, so it really did play out in the beginning that stocks are going to give you a pop. We just don't know if that pop is going to be 60 cents or it was like Apple for $2 or $13. We'll get to that in a second. But again, this is kind of where the market is right now. So you have to be very, very careful. Uh, FSLY, uh, excuse me, this was definitely the move of the day. Uh, Roku's trading and has been trading like there's a deal on the table. It's been so damn aggressive. Uh, it just woke up so ridiculous on Friday. Uh, 163.50 needs to build. Um, so here is Roku. This was definitely the uh, definitely the trade of the day. Um, so it broke, right? Here's a 63.50. Here's a sneaky channel, right? So we talk about sneaky pivots. Here's a 63.50. It takes out the 67 previous you know highs and just explodes to 177. Just an absolute monster move. Uh, I sold early and I was like, I, I wasn't expecting a $15 move, right? Got a couple of points out of this thing and I'm like, all right, great. Next thing I know, this thing goes up 10. All right. Uh, FSLY, I still like this thing. Had a great run this week. Uh, $100 never got there. Uh, ZM, again, not a big move either. 302 needs to build. Um, again, only gave like a dollar and change move. So here's 302. Uh, you know, ran up about $1.50 or so in the kind of reverse course. Again, a lot of names are very, very tired. A um, lot of call buyers in the name. They report on Monday. It's going to be very, very interesting. Uh, Boeing 177 needs to build. Here is Boeing, right? So never, you know, here's the 177. This whole range here, 177, never got there. Uh, Peloton was a monster, absolute monster. And this is where we talk about a delayed reaction. Uh, they got upgraded the day before. Uh, really didn't do anything. They sold it off. Uh, Peloton 73 needs to build. Peloton absolutely exploded. Uh, the catalyst here was not the upgrade. Uh, there was chatter that I did a 10 minute ride a couple of days ago. Um, and I got the only reason I didn't go 11 minutes because I got hungry. Facts of facts. Uh, so here was the 73 just absolutely exploded. Congratulations to all you guys who caught it. Went to 77 and change. Uh, big move there. Uh, Starbucks exploded. Uh, 83, 80, 83, 80, 84 needs to build, right? So here is Starbucks, right? We talked about Starbucks the night before. So here's the 83, 80, 84 area. Uh, went to like 85 and change. Still like, I think still goes higher. Uh, CRM never got to the 279. NIO, I like this thing as a short. Um, it, well, guys, watch this thing 18. Never got to 18. Watch this thing 18 uh, going to the new week. If this thing starts building below 18, it's going to flush down. Uh, workday, not a big move. It had a huge run-up. Don't get me wrong. It had a huge run-up. Uh, 246 only traded to like 248. Uh, Amazon, again, not a big move. Uh, went from 24 and a quarter to like 2430s. And again, you know, seven, eight dollars doesn't sound like a lot in this tape. In this tape, the way it's trading, it's not, but, and then it failed as well. Uh, Facebook never got to the 296. Uh, this one I lost 30 cents in. Um, uh, it was such a weird stock. So I, I get long that, I get long that it goes up like 30 cents 
and then it just kind of fades back the rest of the day. So it's very, very weird. So I lost 30 cents on that. Uh, Roku, just a monster. Chewy had a big run here. 59.50 needs to build. Here was Chewy, right? So here was Chewy. Here's the 59.50, and it traded to 61 and change. So that was good as well. Uh, Peloton, you know, here comes a September $200 call buyers. Um, oh, excuse me. The September $200 call buyers were Roku. I, I tweeted out the wrong thing. Here was definitely the move of the day. And when I say that, that's it's amazing to say considering what Peloton did and what uh, Roku did, but this was the move of the day. NVIDIA, uh, 515, 516, 50, big areas needs to build. Congratulations for you guys who caught NVIDIA. This was a monster, right? So it took out the 15, took out the 16 and a half, uh, and it ran up $11. It felt like it ran up $11 in about 15 minutes. Just an absolute monster move. So you can see these stocks are just, just beasts. When they go, they really, really go. Chewy, Starbucks, NVIDIA. So what we thought, you know, huge, right? That's the best way of saying it, huge. So, you know, what we thought, what we thought was going to be a quiet day, you know, turned out to be uh, very, very aggressive. So kind of wrapping it up, guys, um, again, get your mental health together. Be a better friend to yourself. I'm still bullish in this market. There's still opportunities, but we have to find the better value. Guys, have an awesome, awesome week. Go live your life. Go relax. Go smile. Again, we don't get a, you know, we don't get a do-over. We only live once. Guys, God bless. I'll see you all tomorrow.